Cold countries are richer than hot countries, but why? It is a common observation that winters in Europe and North America are severely cold, yet residents enjoy the benefits of living in one of the world's wealthiest areas. Places like Indonesia, Vietnam, and Brazil, on the other hand, where citizens enjoy warm weather all year, are far worse off. Look at this map of the world's GDP per capita. Countries far north in colder climates tend to have more wealth, and that's not by coincidence. However, there are exceptions to this statement. Hot countries like Singapore, or the UAE, are considerably richer than many cold countries in Europe. These countries, however, became rich because of their valuable natural resources and strategic decisions, but more on that later. And also among the cold countries, we have Russia and other Eastern European states that are not so rich. But that is after decades of mismanagement under the communist rule. Their economies will likely take decades to fix. The actual reasons behind the wealth gap due to temperature are far more complex than expected, but we can generally attribute three main theories into why cold countries are rich. Industrialization, colonialism, and innovation. Countries that capitalized on these three aspects of civilization managed to come out richer and far more developed. So what is the relationship between temperature and wealth? How did the developed countries, despite the cold temperature, manage to gather so much wealth? And what does water and air conditioning have to do with all of this? Stay tuned and we will go over all of this in this week's video. If you enjoy content like this, subscribe to the channel and leave a like. One of the main reasons colder countries managed to thrive is because of the industrialization boom. If we rewind back in history and look at the biggest and strongest colonies, Europeans were not alone. Empires like the Ottoman Empire, mainly modern-day Turkey, and the Mongolian Empire, mainly modern-day China, were some of the biggest and strongest empires that were also located in hotter climates. The fall of these empires coincided with the industrialization and development of the western and northern regions. Of course that wasn't the only reason but it significantly disadvantaged the regions that were falling behind. China, as an example, only began to challenge superpowers like the US only after its great industrial revolution. Also, because of the harsh and long winters and the lack of rich natural resources, colder countries had to find a way to find innovative ways of thriving. One way this was done is through water. Back in the days, the Dutch were known for their canals that facilitated trade between countries. That's why we see rivers and canals in modern-day Holland that flow right through its cities. When the Dutch attempted to build canals in hot climates, they realized that stagnant water formed a mosquito breeding habitat, which they discovered when they tried to construct canals in hot countries. This is a significant advantage of living in a cold environment. Humans have the ability to dress themselves in order to live. However, many harmful bugs and microorganisms just perish. As a result, illness is less prevalent in colder climates. Colonialism can also be considered as the main cause for the poor development of most of the hot countries. Most of the hot countries that you can think of are either located in Asia, Africa, or South America. And what do all of these countries have in common? They were colonized by some point at their history by a rich Western country that also happens to be a cold country. When European explorers began expanding trade and claiming colonies in the early 1400s, problems of resource scarcity have been managed through colonial conquest and economic integration. These approaches further impoverished the poor nations, robbing them of their natural wealth. Furthermore, the introduction of international financial institutions after World War II further locked these countries into a cycle of uneven exchange rates. For hundreds of years the natural resources that poor nations exported to countries like Germany and the United States have been sold at a lower cost than the finished products they import for their own consumption. The result has been development in Western countries, and destabilization and impoverishment in much of the poor countries. The colonialism also has divided the country's population. After stealing their natural resources, it was common practice for colonists to segregate the people for often racist reasons. 
this has only increased slave trading activity. Colonists often left the countries they invaded with little power to extract and profit from their natural resources, and the institutions left behind continued to benefit the invaders that initially colonized the poor countries. The third reason colder countries are richer also has to do with innovation. Innovation is an essential driver of economic progress that benefits consumers, businesses and the economy as a whole. A classic example of innovation is the development of steam engine technology in the 18th century. Steam engines could be put to use in factories enabling mass production, and they revolutionized transport with the railways. More recently, information technology transformed the way companies produce and sell their goods and services, while opening up new markets and new business models. Technological advancements makes it easier to produce goods, increasing what is known as total factor productivity, a key part of economic growth. There has been major scientific inventions that were from Asia and Africa but it was really the West that were able to combine all the knowledge to manufacture a breakthrough invention. There has been one specific invention that has revolutionized economies and that is air conditioning. When the first air conditioner was invented in Brooklyn, New York in 1902, it looked nothing like the modern-day air conditioner. Nevertheless, we are able to control the weather by pushing a button to make it warmer or cooler, wetter or drier. The implications are enormous. Air conditioning has become more than a mere convenience. It is a transformative technology, which has had a profound influence on where and how we live. Computers fail if they get too hot or damp, and air conditioning enables the server to power the internet. If factories couldn't control their air quality, we'd struggle to manufacture. Air conditioning has changed demographics too. It's hard to imagine the rise of cities like Dubai or Singapore without it. But there's an inconvenient truth. You can only make it cooler inside by making it warmer outside. A study in Phoenix, Arizona, found the hot air pumped out of air conditioning units increased the city's nighttime temperature by 2 degrees Celsius. However, air conditioning technology is getting cleaner and greener. Economists have confirmed that there is a relationship between productivity and keeping cool. Singapore and Dubai, despite their heat, managed to become a global hub for companies and tourists. Singapore became a pioneer in electronics and precision engineering exports and Dubai relied on the UAE's rich oil reserves. For other hot countries, however, they are considered a lot poorer than the colder countries. Many years ago, a country's wealth was strongly linked to how much food it could produce, whereas these days wealth is determined by industry and innovation. Every country has the potential to prosper but there are few obstacles in their way. Many hot countries continue facing corruption. Poor countries also struggle to keep their brightest citizens when they prefer immigrating to a better, as in richer, country. The West have already went through its transformation and their economic growth won't be as sharp as it was in then 1900s. In fact, poor countries are following the footsteps of the West and are growing exponentially. According to Statista, 9 out of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world in 2022 were hot countries. This means that we might see an industrialization boom that will shake up the wealth distribution among the world. Here's a fun fact. Antarctica, in spite of being the chilliest continent, has the lowest GDP per capita in the world with about $1.12, which flies on the face of this video's title.